Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today, I'm gonna to be giving y'all a tour of my massive sugar glider cake. There's a lot to cover, so let's get started. Sugar gliders are also known for being notoriously expensive, but your girl's 19 and in college and on a pretty tight budget, so I'm gonna show you guys my tips for how to have an affordable cage, but still spoil your babies. So let's start with the basics. What is this cage? This is actually five Critter Nation cages put together. The single Critter Nation is just that unit. The double Critter Nation is the single unit plus an add-on. So this cage is two single Critter Nations and three add-ons, or two double Critter Nations and one add-on. The cage is six feet wide, two feet deep. This part is four feet tall, and this part is six feet tall. A good rule of thumb when it comes to space is a two by two by three is the minimum size for two sugar gliders. This is five of those, so this could technically house 10, but I use it to house my four neutered males. Hopefully we're gonna see them all in the video. I'll introduce you as we'll get to them. And we're gonna start at the top and start with Latte. I bet he's gonna freak out <laughs> as soon as I move it. This is Latte, he's about three years old. He's a neutered male. He was more of a piebald when he was younger, but he really powdered out. I got him as a rehome. An interesting fact is he's actually registered in the database and he was sold with a breeding pair. So he was an ex-breeder, but the breeder decided to retire him early. So now he's neutered and living out happily his days. He's not super social and he's a little bit skittish and he does suffer with a little bit of over grooming sometimes. It's very mild. I'm not sure if you guys can tell, but yeah, he's a little bit problematic. He's not super fond of attention, but he'll tolerate it, <laughs> which he's not showing very well. So at the top left of the cage, which Latte is very obsessed with, this is where I have their kind of makeshift glider kitchen. The edges are smooth. They just look really raggedy. <laughs> Share gliders are very messy eaters, as you guys can tell. So a tip that a lot of people do to prevent some of the mess is make what's called a glider kitchen. Now you can get some of these pre-made that a lot of people do with really pretty charms. So it's almost like a toy for your gliders. But I just went to the Dollar Tree and got this Tupperware container, cut out this hole and burned the edges so it's completely smooth and nothing for the gliders to get caught on. And I feed them their BML mix inside. I also have two water silos here. Water bottles are great, but they're known for malfunctioning and leaking. So you really wanna make sure you have at least one open water source. So I provide two over here. I also have this shelf in. A lot of people don't use the shelves as Critter Nations, but I like to give them a platform to eat. And this is also really good if there's any slight food aggression because it gives gliders a chance to get away from each other. Directly below their feeding area, I have this long chain. You can actually buy these from Home Depot. This is a long plastic chain. It's really great because it forces the gliders to use a little bit more muscle than something like a tree branch because it's not super stable, but it's also just really cheap and really affordable. Behind this chain, I actually have this little kid's toy that I got at Ross. Toys like these are actually great for shiro gliders because shiro gliders are very intelligent, so they'll definitely make use of things like this. And especially because they have the four opposable thumbs, they love little fidgety things like this. So kids toys are great. The main thing you wanna watch out for is the openings are not too small or too big. If they're about an inch, that's kind of the dangerous size where a shiro glider could potentially get its head in or something like that. Bigger openings like these tend to be great, and if you have any toys with very small pieces that could be choking hazards, you should also watch out for those. But large things like this that is just one piece where there's nothing that can really break off and no small areas for gliders to get themselves jammed into, those are great. Next to there, I have another kid's toy. This is like some sort of bucket thing. So yeah, the sure gliders will use this. I actually have one boy who loves to sleep in here, so these are really cool for that. Okay, moving away from the top level, on the side, I also have a water bottle. I also, I always, <laughs> so I just have this glass KT water bottle here. I really prefer the glass ones over the plastic because there's been so many studies to show that plastic leaks into the water and releases chemicals. So I just feel safer using a glass one. And yeah, I really like this one. It's a good sturdy water bottle and it hasn't leaked on me or anything like that. So now to go below this second level, I have this little DIY that I actually made. I want to make a tutorial, but these are like embroidery 
like mats or something like that. And I used this Rex lace, which is pretty much like plastic string to put it all together. And you can make some really cool shapes with it. I just have it underneath here in case the sure gliders want to go on it. For the most part, gliders enjoy being high up and I really don't see them use the bottom level at all. But I thought if I had a little bit more toys like this and I can add some treats in there for foraging, it's hopefully going to encourage them to use the space a little bit more. I also have another one of my DIY toys. This material is like seven or eight dollars you can get on Amazon and so is the Rex lace. So you can make so many toys for so cheap. So yeah, I also have this like little tubey thing that I made which is kind of like a bridge and they really enjoy going across this. One thing you might notice is that my base is very different than what the Critter Nations normally come with. The Critter Nation bottom actually comes with a tray just like this that I use for the bottom. Now, I actually joined some rat Facebook groups and a lot of people were doing bioactive setups and they would either use cement containers like this or build up a wall with like perspex or like acrylic sheeting so they can actually put soil in and they noticed that the rats would spend a lot more time foraging and at the bottom layer and in the soil. I did that with just a little bit of soil for the gliders. To be completely honest, I haven't really noticed them use it much. And again, they never really come down here, but it's been so much easier to clean. And it actually does expand their square space a little bit because this goes just a couple extra inches down. So it does give them a little bit more space. And it allows me to put a lot more bedding down, which is really great for odor control. This is just a size large cement mixing tub so you can get at Home Depot and they somehow perfectly fit into Critter Nation cages. So a lot of people do this hack and have success with it and I really like it. It does make the doors a little bit harder to close. So I usually have to go in with two hands as you guys can see. But besides that, I really like it. Moving back up and a little bit to the right, as you can see, this chain goes all the way across to the cage. I also have another chain that starts here. This is again, another plastic chain that you can buy very cheaply at Home Depot. And I got these little mixing utensils. Oh, <laughs> there's another glider. So I guess we have to, I don't want you to come out. You're my hard to catch man. Oh gosh, <laughs> he's crazy. I don't feel like introducing him. We'll do him later. <laughs> he's, he escaped and he's a pain in the butt to catch. You? Yeah, you. You're my least favorite. Oh my god. He's so sporadic too. <laughs> okay. So these plastic utensils are just from the Dollar Tree. And I put zip ties and just put them on like this. Which is just another easy way. It just creates rattles. Again, sure gliders love things that they can hold and do stupid stuff with. So they really like this. This chain has a bunch of charms all over it. I have this one, again, more sugar glider charms. And these are just these plastic rulers that I got at Walmart in their party aisle section. So anything plastic like this for the most part is safe for sugar gliders. Just again, watch out for things that can be choking hazards, have very sharp parts, anything that gliders could get their heads stuck in. If there's a way for them to get in trouble with it, they'll probably get in trouble. So just make sure everything you're putting in is super fail safe. So above this chain, I have this special sugar glider toy. Now there's a lot of great vendors who can actually make you custom sugar glider toys. And this is one of those. This obviously started with some type of like watering can and she added these plastic curly straws. You can also do these types of things yourself, but I just haven't really got into it because I feel like I don't have the time. And I feel like if I started, I would be way too addicted. <laughs> so. Yeah, so you have these. Um, I love these toys because they have all these little mugs which are great for foraging. Sure gliders are obsessed with charms. This is my gliders. I wish I had a non-evil glider to show you. I think Camel's the only one in there. Who else is in there? Anyone want to come out? Oh, <laughs> you want to show how you play? Look at that, Camel. Cam Cam. Wow, high quality content. Okay, well, away from this watering jug toy, which is probably one of their favorites, I have this little fleece pouch here. With sugar gliders, it's really ideal to have at least one sleeping area per glider. For the most part, they're probably going to cram into the most small, inconvenient pouch and try to all sleep on top of each other. But every so often, you'll have some gliders that get a little bit upset and just want to be off on their own. So having an individual pouch for each glider is just a great way to prevent any aggression or anything like that. 
So this is one of their pouches in the very back. I also have this fleece DIY vine that I made. You just cut pieces of fleece and you tie them together and you can make it as long as you want. Let me know if you guys want a tutorial on this because it's really easy and you guys can see all the knots. With sugar gliders, because they have very delicate nails and they're pretty much psycho, if their nails get caught in something and they can't pull their hand out, they're going to freak out and they'll literally chew their hand off. So there's very few materials that are actually approved for sugar gliders and fleece happens to be one of them. Even though fleece is approved, just because something is made of fleece doesn't mean you can buy it. Pouches like these actually have to be made very specialized to make sure that there's no exposed threads or seams showing because again, those threads are a hazard for sugar gliders getting their nails caught. So these type of pouches and fleece items are definitely a place where you really can't save that much money. Just because you see something cheaper on Amazon or at Petco, you shouldn't buy it. These should really come from a sugar glider approved vendor. Moving on from this fleece vine, I have another thing that I got at Ross. Can you guys tell I'm a little bit addicted to Ross? Anyways, these are just plastic dive rings that, again, are super cheap. They're probably really easy to find in the summer. And I have these baby links to kind of link them together. And at the bottom, I have a bracelet that I just got at Walmart, again, in the party aisle. And this is a, like, random bird toy. A lot of bird toys aren't good for gliders because they have rope on them or they have metal. Rope is not good because, again, it can snag sure gliders' nails. Metal is okay, but because sure gliders pee everywhere, the metal is going to rust and it can potentially cost a, or cause a UTI. So I guess if you watch it, it's not a huge deal, but yeah, plastic is kind of a lot better for them. And then this is also another plastic bird toy. Sure gliders actually have partially prehensile tails and a lot of them are known as what's called ring or bracelet carriers. So what they'll do is they'll wrap their tail around a bracelet and they'll actually try to like drag it into their cage. I have one tail carrier and he loves bringing all of these types of things into his pouch. So I'm sure he's going to be super excited and try to bring all of those into there. I also love to put fleece things like this near the pouch because a lot of the times the sugar gliders will try to drag this into the pouch just to give them something a little bit softer. Also, I forgot to mention in every single pouch, especially in the winter, but I like to just do it all the time. I like to add a little bit of extra fleece. Oh, who is this? Is this Latte? Hey. <laughs> Hi. I like to add just a little bit of extra fleece. You guys can see here. Uh, oh. There's my crazy boy. I like to add a little bit of extra fleece to use as a blanket. <laughs> oh my god, Camel is being so cute. Maybe we will his his introduction. So the other glider, this is Camel. He's actually probably the youngest glider. He's a Cremino. He's also the least bonded and he's so energetic and absolutely crazy. He like teleports and he doesn't even glide. He's <laughs> he's so crazy. Okay, I'm gonna shut that because you will definitely try to jump out. <laughs> He's definitely the most adventurous. He, <laughs> I actually haven't done that much work with bonding because he is just way too fast. And I realized I hate fast gliders. I'm old guys. I don't want to be chasing after a glider. If <laughs> the only gliders I like to take out are the ones that are super slow and super cuddly. I, I can't deal with his personality, but yeah, he's about a year old and he's a total sweetheart. He's also the most easygoing glider. I think all the gliders think that he's their favorite. And he always manages to somehow escape when I'm like putting in their food, he'll just jump out of the cage. And it's a huge process to lure him back in. And he'll kind of somehow always get behind the fleece, but like behind the bar so the gliders can see him. And they're all trying to like help him in somehow and trying to give him advice on how to get in the cage. It's actually so cute. You can tell how smart they are. Okay, so that's everything in this part of the cage. I also do have just one more fleece pouch. I'm so sad. This is a new fleece pouch and I just washed it once and some fleece holds up better than others. You can always hand wash them, but I'm kind of lazy. So this is another specialty made fleece pouch. As you guys can see, no exposed seams, which is really important because you don't want the gliders getting their nails caught. Okay, so now that we've covered this double critter nation unit, let's move on to this triple stack. Let's start in the middle. Over here, I have another pouch and I have a water bottle. Even though pouches like these really have to be specially made, 
I actually figured out a way to make these DIY pouches that you can just knot. They're not double lined, so they're not as thick for the winter, but they work really well. And I always like to offer one, especially when it starts getting a little bit warmer because the sugar gliders, <laughs> I wonder who's in there. Which one of you is it? Which one? <laughs> but especially when it starts getting a little bit warmer because all the sugar gliders do sleep together, I like to provide them one option that's not as tight as like a really nice fleece pouch. So something like this works really well. So I have this pouch on the wall. Over here, I have another water bottle. I think having at least two water bottles is really good. If you can have more, that's even better. I also like to at least have one water bottle that's right near a ledge. For the most part, sugar gliders don't mind hanging in all these weird positions and getting water, but I do like to give them the option where they can just sit somewhat normally and have a drink. I also have a wheel on this shelf. This is one of the custom cruiser wheels. I get so many questions about the wheels that I use, why I use these. I've made a video all about safe sugar glider wheels and another one on why I use metal wheels. This is not actually metal, it's mesh, but everyone assumes that it's metal. So I have a video on why I use metal wheels for sugar gliders and how sugar gliders use the wheel, which has some really cute clips of one of my gliders running on the wheel. So I think that video would be really helpful if you're curious about the wheels. Below that wheel, I have another wheel. <laughs> surprise, surprise. This is also where the ends of their plastic chains are hooked, just right underneath these shelves. Some people like to mount their wheels really high up on the cage. I'm personally not a huge fan of that because I've seen how clumsy my gliders are and they will try all types of shenanigans on the wheel. They will like try to sit on the outside while one's on the inside. And I just have like nightmares of gliders getting thrown off the wheel or getting hit and hurt badly. So I really just like for my peace of mind to put them on a platform. And also the custom cruiser wheels are a little bit heavier, so they do do better. I don't think they can actually be wall mounted. So this works out. Again, even though the wheels are by far their most favorite toy, it's also their most expensive. The wheels are around $70, or I think the wheels are 55 and I paid like 15 for shipping, but they really are their most used toy and you really can't cut corners with this. I've used like the exotic nutrition wheel before, which is also still pretty expensive. I think it's almost $40, but it's really, again, not custom made for sugar gliders and it's really not catered to their running style. So I highly recommend investing in a high quality approved sugar glider wheel. For the most part, a good rule of thumb is one wheel for two to three gliders. So I have two for four gliders. Some people are able to get away with having just one wheel for four gliders if you have a bigger cage, but Honestly, even if I had four wheels, I think the gliders would be obsessed with it. Along with being their most favorite and most expensive toy, this is also probably their most dangerous. I am so paranoid about the wheel, so I don't like to put a lot of toys near it. If a glider is running on the wheel, and again, they do some crazy stuff on here, and they can really build up some real speed if they want. So I don't like to have any toys that could potentially brush up against it, so a glider isn't like on and somehow gets knocked off. So yeah, I just like to leave the areas near the wheel nice and empty. And that's also good because it gives them a little bit more gliding space. Just on this side of the plastic chains, again, I have more of these random plastic utensils, bracelets, charms. Um, this is just like a little thing I made out of the Rex lace because I was bored. And over here is another one of my no Suo fleece DIYs. It's kind of like this donut thing. It's really cool. The sugar gliders love using it kind of like a tire swing. So yeah, another one of their favorites. I guess we'll follow this chain up to this part of the cage. Up here is this really cool trash can toy. I actually think that this is probably their, okay, no one's sleeping in it right now, but like 99% of the time <laughs> someone is sleeping in here and all four of them can't fit. So it's almost like a fight of who gets to go in here. I have another, I have like so many of these trash cans. I don't know why I don't put more in. Um, this is another one of their favorite toys. This is actually called a pulley. This is really fun because gliders can actually hang on it and pull it, or sometimes they'll try to pull it with their tails and again, drag it into their pouch like that. Oh, this one can't quite fit, but they have so much fun with these toys and these charms. And I love the color scheme on this one. So this is another one of their favorite trash can hiding toys. Also, there's two gliders in here, not just one. And these two happen to be my favorite. Don't tell the others. <laughs> He's not thrilled with me, but this is Cow. This is the glider I've had the longest. We're coming up on two years. 
He was a rehome and the owners weren't sure of how old he was. He was between one and three when I got him, which I don't understand how you don't know if you've had a glider one year or three years. But yeah, he's maybe five or four right now, so not too sure. He also has a short stubby tail. He came to me like that. He also came to me with a rodent wheel, so I kind of think I know what happened there. This top level of their cage is definitely where there's the most toys. I have this, which again, I got these little trays at Dollar Tree and I put them together with a bracelet in the middle and just kind of rex laced it. These are really cool. Again, it gives them something to climb on. Plastic things like this are great for gliders and they love this material. It's easy for them to hang on to. And it's kind of like a challenging kind of obstacle course because it's not super stable. So I love this for them. I have another one of these like dive ring garlands that I made with some more bracelets, dive rings, and baby links. Over here is this super special pig toy for Piglet. <laughs> we gotta do your introduction introduction next. But yep, there's this really cool pig hammock toy. Again, a bunch of charms and things for them to hide treats in, and they absolutely love this. I think this is their most favorite toy. <clears throat> Up here, there's also more of the chain. This is like the longest piece of chain ever. And yeah, this actually comes in multiple colors. So you guys can do really pretty theme setups. But yeah, more chain here for them to climb on. I have this hammock at the very top. They love just something for them to sit at the very top and observe the rest of the world at. So I'm glad I got to put this in for them. I also have this box again from Dollar Tree. And I just ended up randomly zip tying this like plastic bird ladder I had onto it. Again, this texture is easy for them to hold on to. If you have younger gliders, I feel like maybe this size hole could be a little bit of a hazard of them getting stuck, but I have big fat boys and they really don't have any issue. So they love this. And at the very back, I have this super long tunnel with these little windows. And this is another toy that they absolutely love. And I guess we're doing the most special glider for last. This is Piglet. I got him and Camel at the same time, which was last March. It's actually crazy because I got them right before this whole pandemic thing started on my Christmas break of college. So he's the sweetest. He's my cuddle bug. <laughs> I love you. You're so special. He's a super special glider. But yeah, this is Piglet. He was, again, he was also a piebald when he was younger, but he also really powdered out. You can't even see his pied marker anymore, but... You're still beautiful, and I love his ears. <laughs> he is the least athletic of all the gliders. He cannot jump for anything. That jump is probably the most he's <laughs> really ever capable of. He's not the brightest either, but he's so sweet. I love him so much. And he's my only glider that's going to play when the lights are on. Everyone else only plays when the lights are off, which is normal because their eyes are pretty sensitive. So, yep, that's Piglet. So yeah, that's everything in this really big Tura Glider cage. I've loved having it. A lot of people don't like combining the Critter Nation cages. Um, I definitely don't think it's perfect, but it's worked really well for me. So we talked a lot about being on a budget. You guys are probably wondering how I have this super obnoxious cage. Actually, these cages are pretty reasonably priced, especially for what you would pay for like a bird cage of the same size or to have something custom made. These normally are $250 for one of these units. So this whole thing would have been a little bit over 500, which again is super reasonable for what you'd pay for a bird cage compared to this size. However, I don't have that much money and I did not pay that much money for these cages. These cages are super popular for ferrets, rats. A lot of people even use them for guinea pig and rabbits, even though they're not really that ideal. But yeah, these are super popular cages and you can actually find them used for really good deals. I bought both of my double critter nations for less than $100 each and I spent $50 on my single. So that's how much I paid. I also didn't buy all of the cages at once. I first spent $100, used the cage as a double, and then I added the triple, used that for like a year almost. Oh, don't quote me on that. But yeah, I added this double very recently and I can still expand more. There's no limit, so I absolutely love that. When I got the cage, not all the parts are perfect, which is completely fine. Each of the cages comes with two trays and one bottom tray. One of the cages I got was previously used for rats, so a lot of the trays were very chewed, so 
I don't necessarily have all the pieces that come with it, but it's completely fine because it is kind of like a makeshift DIY cage where I put the pieces together. So it's not a huge deal if some specific pieces are missing. Let's give Piglet a mealworm because I accidentally smushed his hand a little bit. So come here, babes. I try to train them for whenever they see this white tray that they realize it's a mealworm. The other lighters actually caught on to it a lot faster than he did because I'm telling you guys, he's a little bit slow, but I don't want anyone else to see it. Come on, Piglet, come on. It's your mirror. <laughs> I told you guys, he's really not that smart. Oh my God, this is probably gonna take him like hours to figure out. <laughs> you know what? When you're cute, you don't have to have brains. It's okay. <laughs> Here. Here, be in my outro. <laughs> Thank you guys so much for watching. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed the video. Those were just some of our money saving tips that we have. And I really want to show off this awesome glider cage because I absolutely love it. Please let me know any tips that you guys have to help me improve. And if you have any questions, be sure to leave them in the comments below and I'll do my best to answer. Okay, say bye piggy. Bye.